Up until now, I've covered a lot on weathering factory painted models. But now it's time to get into painting and customizing your own undecorated models, coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there, my name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If you're looking for tips and advice on how to transform your plastic models into something that you would find on the rails today, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. So have you custom painted your own undecorated models? How well has it worked for you? Let me know in the comments section down below. These days, most model trains that you can find either at the local hobby shop or online come pre-painted from the factory. Many of them are finely detailed and highly accurate to the prototype, but it wasn't always that way. For example, if you were painting a Canadian road in end scale during the 1970s, you needed to do your own work. Now, model train manufacturers often put out undecorated models alongside their general releases, because there are, of course, modelers that do like to customize and do their own roads. When it comes to structures and scenery, there is almost always a need for some custom painting. So what I'm starting with today is some of the basics when it comes to painting your own models. And this can be applied to locomotives, rolling stock, structures, and scenery. The main thing to remember when it comes to painting is starting with a good foundation. If you don't prepare your model well to receive paint, then it's going to lead to a lot of problems later on. Now my process here assumes that you've already done the research into the prototype, whether you are trying to replicate something that's in real life or you're freelancing your own. Most likely it's going to be somewhere in between. What I am assuming here is that you've got an undecorated model or something that you'd like to repaint. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm assuming that you are starting with a truly undecorated model, whether it's a structure, a locomotive, or a piece of rolling stock. Of course, the first step with your model is to prepare it to receive paint. This includes assembling what needs to be put together, removing trucks and wheel sets if they came attached to the model, or in the case of structures, building and customizing it. If you're going to super detail your model, this is where you would do it. I'll make one tip that you will find helpful with this. When it comes to painting structures or locomotives, leave any clear plastic parts off the model. Or if you can't, make sure that they are well masked before you start. The three types of models that I'm demonstrating here is one group of three Husky well stacks, an older roundhouse boxcar model, and a Walther's three bay roundhouse. In the case of the well cars, they came completely unassembled, so I had to put them together. While most of the parts are press fit, I chose to glue some of the plastic parts together for additional strength. I left off the walkways and the coupler assemblies to be painted separately and added later, but anything that would be painted the same color was included. In the case of the boxcar, I took the opportunity to upgrade its weight, and for the roundhouse building, I removed the windows and frames, bricked in a few of the windows, and added more downspouts to customize the look. The most important step when it comes to painting undecorated models is a good coat of primer. Primer coats provide a good surface for the paint to stick to. Not only that, if you've done some customizing and super detailing on the model, they also help cover up different types of materials. Primer provides a smooth, even coat over all of this and makes sure that the paint adheres to it equally well. Not only that, military modelers often use primer as a way to detect flaws in their construction work so that they can go back and fix it before doing the final layer. That way they can correct them before going into the full painting. Not too long ago, the only real option for priming models was a gray colored primer. Black and white primers became available and are much more commonly used amongst modelers. These days, there are a lot of different options available that can be applied either through a spray can or through an airbrush, and they come in all kinds of different colors to get you started. What color you use ultimately depends upon what you're trying to achieve and what you have access to. I'll make a few brand recommendations in a moment, but for the purposes of this video, you're going to see me use largely black and white primers. White primers are best used when the colors that you're going to be putting over them tend to be either light or bright colors. Red, yellow, light blue, and white, of course, are best used over top of a white primer. Black is suitable for darker or more muted colors. Black primers are also handy when the colors that you use, if you don't paint a certain area, it just simply looks like it's in shadow. These days, however, there are a lot more colors that are available. There is a company out there called the Army Painter that provides spray cans in 22 different primer colors. This can really reduce your painting time if you're trying to do a lot of figures or cars in a hurry. Depending upon the size of the model or the number of models determine whether or not I apply primer using my airbrush or whether I use a spray can. 
As an example, since these Microtrain Husky Well Stack cars and the Roundhouse Boxcar are small tasks, I elected to use an airbrush. By contrast, this Walther's Roundhouse is a larger model, so I opted to take it outside and use a spray can of black primer. My airbrush primer of choice these days is a brand called Steinel Res, manufactured by Batcher Airbrush. I've been very pleased with the smoothness of the coverage in both white and black, plus they have a wide selection of other colors. For the Husky Well Stacks and the Boxcar, I started with white. I lightly sprayed over the model at first in a thin layer rather than focusing on one thick layer. The Steinle Rest Primer is one of the few things that can go straight into the airbrush without needing to be thinned. Even with paints that claim that no thinner is needed, I still mix to the right consistency. These primers are the exception, and it is why they are so nice to use. They dry very quickly and are ready to work with almost immediately. For the walkways of the intermodal cars, I kept them separate, holding them mostly secure with light tack painter's tape and airbrush them with black Steinle Res primer. If you want a more in-depth recommendation on different primers to use, check the description down below. For the roundhouse, as I already mentioned, I took it outside and used Games Workshop's Chaos Black Primer to give the model a nice even coat. Before applying the black primer, I taped this down to a box so that I could hold it in the air. When working with a spray can, this is something that you want to do either outside or in a garage, but you definitely need good ventilation. Humidity may also be a factor depending upon where you live, but my climate is dry, especially in these winter months. Spraying the primer is done in light coats applied with short bursts, starting to the left or right of the model, then sweeping across it. This gives a good, even coat. In this case, the roundhouse is likely to be lit as well, so I made sure that the inside walls also had a good layer of black. Once these primer coats are dry, then it's ready for paint. Now here's a bonus tip on something called pre-shading. While these primed models could simply be painted straight up as they stand now, some modelers use a technique called pre-shading to add layers of shadow and depth to the colors prior to the main color being applied. While the technical terms may vary depending upon the style, really this is under the blanket term of pre-shading, where one uses paint to help tone variations to the main color that is applied over it. In the case of the boxcar, I am demonstrating a straight up pre-shading technique. I apply the Steinle Res black primer over the white primer, painting the underside and the roof entirely in black, and then applying thin, if uneven, shades of black along the rib lines and door edges. This will eventually be covered up when I apply the main color of Tamiya Hull Red, but the variation in the coat makes the model more interesting to look at once this is done. For the well stacks, on the other hand, since I'm going to be demonstrating a style called color modulation in the next video, the pre-shading is done a bit differently. In this case, the cars will be yellow, but if I were to use black, these shaded areas would come out more of a greenish under the yellow paint. So instead, I am using Tamiya Hull Red and masked off different places on the car to create the illusion of light and shade. Again, this kind of shading is much more obvious at this point, but you will see how it works out when I paint them in the next video. When it comes to painting, a good start makes all the difference. Using a good primer ensures that the paint won't flake off at a later point, essentially ruining what would otherwise be a fantastic paint job. If you remember nothing else from this video, remember to prime your models. Over the next few videos, you will see how these primer coats set up the foundation for a couple of different techniques. These can be in just the straight up painting of the Husky Well Stacks, or creatively using salt in providing a highly realistic chipped effect on the boxcar, and transforming a stock Walther's kit into a living, breathing roundhouse that will see life on my club's new module. So I hope you found this helpful, and if you're looking for tips and advice on how to get the most out of your painting and weathering projects, then please hit subscribe and click on that little bell icon, and you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, if you haven't done so already, please check out the other videos in this channel, especially the Weathering Basics playlist. So thanks for watching, good luck, and may you keep on track.